Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinker Studio and welcome to the next Let's Make Blender 2.7 tutorial. In this tutorial we will be modeling and animating a flag. This tutorial series assumes that you know the basics of Blender modeling. If you are new to Blender, I would recommend viewing my Blender Basics course before beginning this series. So let's begin by changing to the Cycles Render. And I'm going to go into orthographic and front view. And let's delete the default cube and add in a plane and rotate it around the x axis by 90 degrees. Now we're going to go ahead and scale this, and you can hit S and scale it like you want. The flag needs to be big enough for the wind physics effect to actually move it. So just keep that in mind. Now what you can do is under the scene tab down here under units, you can set your unit presets. I'm going to go ahead and choose feet. Then if you open up the numeric panel with your N key, under dimensions you'll see my plane is actually two feet by two feet right now. What I'm going to do is change my X width to 9 feet and my Y to 6 feet and make sure you put like for me it's feet so FT or if you're using meters you can put M behind it to make sure that it's correct then you just go ahead and close the panel using your N key and we want to make sure that we apply the scale this is especially important if you are going to export this out into a game engine so to apply the scale, just hit Control A and click on Scale. And over here in the Outliner, double click on Plane and just rename it Flag. Now while still in Object Mode, let's go ahead and add a cylinder. And change the Cap Fill to Triangle Fan. And go ahead and place it to the right of the flag. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it on the X and Y axes. Just make it a little bit narrower. And then scale along the Z axis. Make it large enough to fit the actual flag size. Then in the outliner, go ahead and double click on cylinder and just rename it pole. Now we need to also make sure that we apply the scale to our pole. So again, hit control A and apply the scale. Select your flag and tab into edit mode. And we need to subdivide the flag so it will actually move like a, a real flag. So if you just hit your W key, you can go ahead and click on subdivide. And in the tool panels, just click on number of cuts and put in a number. I'm going to use 25 and just hit your enter key. And then just go ahead and tab back into object mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pin the flag to the pole. We're going to pin the upper and lower vertices on the right side of the flag to make it look like it's actually attached to the pole. So make sure that you have your flag selected. Tab back into edit mode. Go ahead and open up the vertex tab. And under vertex groups go ahead and add a group and just name it flag. Then we need to go ahead and select the very top vertex and the very bottom one. And then go ahead and under vertex groups, click assign. Now tab back into object mode. Make sure that you have the flag selected and open up your physics tab. 
then click on cloth then down here under cloth where it says pinning go ahead and put a check mark next to pinning and then from the drop down right below it select flag now go ahead and select the pole and go ahead and click on collision because we want to make sure that the flag while it's moving will not actually pass through the mesh of the pole and go ahead and click on the play button and make sure that everything is working correctly and it looks like it is okay now that everything is working properly we're just going to give our pole and our flag a couple of quick materials so go ahead and select your flag and open up your materials tab add a new material we'll just call this flag and I'm just going to make a bright blue material hex code I'm using is 30C1E7 now click on the pole and add a new material just name it pole I'm just gonna give it a light gray color hex code I'm using is A1 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 now go ahead and tab into edit mode and we're going to split our window into three We'll go ahead and change one of these to my UV editor and change the other one to the node editor. Now make sure that your pole is still selected and we're going to unwrap it using a smart UV project. So hit your U key and just hit smart UV project. I'm going to give it a little bit of an island margin click OK and click on new in your UV window and give this a title and click OK then in the node editor we're going to add a image texture so you can hit shift A texture image texture and then open up the UV that you just named and with the pole selected go ahead and go to the render tab and scroll to the bottom where it says bake and then click on bake then don't forget to save the UV as an image then in the outliner you can go ahead and click on the flag to select it tab into edit mode and we're going to do the same thing hit U, smart UV project, and click OK then click on the plus to make a new UV and give it a name then in UV editor go ahead and add an image texture and again open the UV that you just named and back under the render tab click on bake go ahead and save out the UV as an image and we can go ahead and collapse these two windows that so we don't need them anymore and collapse that one Oops. go ahead and tap back into object mode 
and hit your A key to make sure that you have anything selected. Now we're going to go ahead and add a force field. So it's Shift A. Then under force field, go ahead and click on wind. Now you'll notice the small arrow pointing up when you first actually add the wind. That's going to indicate from which direction that your wind is going to come. So go ahead and place this anywhere around the flag or the pole that you want. I'm just going to rotate mine around the y-axis by negative 90 degrees and put it close to the pole. And go ahead and go back to your physics tab. You see what it says force field and wind, and we want to increase the strength. Then hit start and see what your wind is doing to your flag. That's a little high. Change it down to, let's say, 500. And again, if your flag is just simply falling, try to rescale your flag because it might not be big enough for the wind to actually be affecting it. There we go. Okay, now once you have your animation all done, you can actually go to your render tab. Make sure that you have your camera set up and you can hit animation and go ahead and export a portion or the entire animation, whichever you choose. You can also export these out to game engines. If you're interested in using this animation in Unity, I would recommend going to JNM's channel and checking out his Unity and Blender tutorial Alembic Import to Timeline. I'll give you the link in the description for this particular video. And if you actually want to export the animation to the Unreal Engine, I will go ahead and check out Gadden Games channel and look for his video Blender Fluid Simulation to Unreal Engine 4 with Alembic. Again, I'll put the link in the description below. So there you have your very simple flag animation. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.